Now, I should really be introducing this evening's show, but I'm afraid I am somewhat distracted because I am sitting on the banks of the Crocodile River. Uh, about 30 yards of that way or thereabouts is the Kruger National Park. Uh, about four minutes ago, a fairly sizable elephant just calmly strolled across the river. Uh, there's some hippo bathing in the water below me, and the sun is just slipping down over the horizon of one of the great stretches of the natural planet that forms the backdrop for this evening's edition of Dan Really Likes Wine, brought to you by Norman Goodfellows. And it is a show that has probably slipped straight into the, or oh, at least top three, uh, possibly even more than that for the best locations we have been in. There is a serenity to this part of the world that is pretty hard to beat, the wonder of the South African bush. Is it possible to improve upon this? Well, actually it is in two ways this evening, one by adding some fabulous wine and the other by adding a rather well-known guest who you probably, though, don't know from the wine world. He's a little better known for his exploits on the rugby field. Now, I am up in this part of the world for the Kambaku Invitational, a guy called Harry Van Dyke, who runs a wonderful charity event, raises money for golf in the area, for the Kambaku Golf Club and for golf development. And tomorrow we'll be out on the course nice and early, uh, joined by a range of people from Gary Teichman and Jacques Rudolph to Skulk Brits and Zama Seeliger and a, a whole lot of South African athletes of note as we take on a really cool little course that sits on the border of Mozambique. It's an enchanting spot, one that Harry and his team have worked so hard to put together, and it is a delight to play. So that is on my horizon for tomorrow. On my horizon for this evening, though, a chance to work principally on how to pronounce the name of today's wine, uh, because he's deliberately put this label on to make sure people like me have a tough time naming it. I'll tell you what, I'll get him to introduce it and phrase it properly in just a moment. Him is our very, very special guest. Someone who's become a good friend of mine. Uh, I started out as a fan. Now I'm a fan and a friend. Uh, Mornay Duplessis, Springbok captain, the manager of the 1995 World Cup winners. And for me, most importantly, the chair of the Laureus Sport for Good Foundation, a platform I serve very happily, very proudly as an ambassador and a platform that through the work of people like Mornay and Johan Rupert has allowed children all over the world uh, to receive life-changing experiences through sport and have a lasting impact simply through playing a range of games. But it's not sport that we're talking about. Instead, it is wine and the sprawling empire that Mornay Duplessis has in Rubik Castile. Uh, it takes almost a minute to walk from one side of his vineyard to the other. How did he fall in love with wine? Why did he try to produce it? And how on earth do you pronounce the name? All of that is coming in just a moment. First up, though, here's a quick look at some of the latest wine news. So this is coming up. Actually, this is Mornay's part of town. He's now kind of semi-retired to Hermana. So I think he's the vice captain of the junior lawn bowls team at the moment. out here in the bush 
uh, but we're safely back. <clears throat> and if you missed that, just uh, the chance to join at the Marine, the Newton Johnson team, uh, head over to the Newton Johnson website and you can get some more details on the Marine on that dinner. Uh, and particular that wind and sea Pinot Noir from a tiny little vineyard of which a small amount of wine is made and wine that you're going to be able to sample at this dinner. Then on to Norman Goodfellows in four ways, and it is Carmen Stevens and a wine tasting extraordinaire. Carmen, such a groundbreaking winemaker in South Africa, paving the way for many other, uh, not just women, but women of color and having a massive impact on the South African wine landscape. And Carmen herself will be tasting. That is tomorrow night at Norman Goodfellows in four ways and your chance to sample some wine there, as well as pair it with some great food. And if you can't do tomorrow, you can do tomorrow, but you're still thirsty a day after then Wednesday. A Waterford tasting, same place, the Norman Goodfellows Four Way Superstore. It's a beautiful store, some beautiful wine. And again, plenty of fantastic food on its way. And uh, that will be for us to look forward to on Wednesday evening. Right. Well, that takes us into this evening's show and my very special guest, Monet de Plessis. What a pleasure to have you on the show. And in a context for all the, the broadcasting and events and time on stages you and I have shared together over the world over the years, for the first time, it's not about sport. It's not about sport for good. It's not about glorious, as passionate as we are about all of those yeah, things. Yeah. It's something completely different. But before we jump into this reinvention of yours as a, a champion of rosé, uh, I think it's quite important to explain why we're here, because a, a very good shared acquaintance is doing exactly what we have just mentioned, something that sport, brings together sport, sport for good. good. Yeah, and uh, Harry Van Dijk and his team at Kambaku. Harry, Harry um, I think you've been here for about eight years in this, <laughs> in this tournament, and I was invited last year um, you know, I had such a wonderful time, especially to see what he's done with that golf course um, on the corner of the Crocodile and the Willifons River. I mean, it is just unbelievable. But again, there is um, there is something behind good times. You know, not just having a good time, good time for a reason. And as you say, you know, that's sort of part of. Uh, where you and I come from with the Laureus Foundation is, you know, we've, I've, I think, and I can say you as well, has been treated well by sport. We certainly yeah, have. And, we have. And, 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 and to put something back and still enjoy it is, uh, as we do immensely. And to see the difference that sport makes. And, you know, just now you look at our country and the, the netball going on, our soccer girls at the World Cup, our rugby team coming right um <laughs> you know the tour de france we've got a placing almost in the tour de france uh, you know and it just focuses people every time you see it um it's it's not a difficult concept to promote to put it that way <laughs> and harry's tournament for golf development and and um his charities uh, great to be here with uh, we just see gary teichman walk in <laughs> And he's just <laughs> Gary's just said to me he's leaving for for the function, and Bush James is here, um, Dean Dog is here, as you mentioned, a great time, and of course you, yeah, Dan. <laughs> and and we're all here because yeah. sport has brought us together, and uh, the combination of sports ability to unite, but also sports ability to excel from a South African perspective, uh, makes for a comparison that I've often used on stage uh, at both sport and wine events consistently in a country that we know does have its challenges yeah. sport and wine are two spaces that around the world yeah, yeah. serve us so well yeah. if it's not a golfer winning a tournament it's a cabernet sauvignon winning an award a football team yeah. doing really well or a shiraz getting something they're two spaces that both do us so yeah, proud you know then i walk into a famous london wine store you know i don't, don't even know what it's called but it's rugby field size and i walk up to the counter where the and this sort of comes close back to what our story tonight you know the swat blanc wines and there they are yeah. you know, amongst the best in the world and not only the swat blanc wines but our wines and i think the last 10 20 years has seen uh, our wines take their place internationally um the the reviews from wine fundies around the world is, is just you know it makes you proud it's like you like you do 
when we win the World Cup in whichever sport we participate. You know, we can take our place with the best in the world in so many aspects. I mean, in business, sport, winemaking, scientists, you know, dare I say Elon Musk, you know, he sort of comes, his roots are here, you might not be from here anymore, but you know, in all walks of life, there's so much to be proud of in South Africa, and wine certainly is, is, is one of those. Now, the uh, the rugby story in particular, when you know intimately, manager of the team that won in 1995, uh, we arrived on the sport, made quite an impact uh, sporting uh, stage internationally quite quickly. A wine has taken a little bit longer to emerge from the perception, especially internationally, that South African wine often sat in a slightly lower spectrum. Yeah, yeah. We're starting to change that now. Yeah. But while people overseas might not have known that, you certainly would. Because if my experience with rugby players is anything to go by, um, you generally don't mind the occasional drink after a game of rugby. And most rugby players are not these, uh, let's just throw bottles of spirits down our throats out the bottle, at least not till later in the night. No. Most of the rugby guys I've met really do enjoy a good glass of wine. What was your introduction to wine? When did you first fall in love with wine, discover it was something you quite liked? Well, look, you know, I went to university at Stellenbosch. So, I mean, I, <laughs> Question you answered. Know, it's, like, it's like people say, how did you fall into sport and rugby. Well, my dad was a Springbok rugby captain and my mom was a Springbok hockey captain, so I played sport. <laughs> so you go to Stellenbosch, you learn about wine, and of course, a, a, a gentleman that I played, I think the two of us combined played more than 200 games for Western Province, Jan Gullen could see it. <laughs> and he was at that early stages working at Kononko. And, you know, it just that that appreciation of of I, I come from the Transvaal my dad had a bottle of sports so I knew a little bit about wine but you know in those days it was I won't mention the brands but it you no, know but please do because that's an interesting part of the history of wine what yeah. what were the ones well you, you know there were the the Grunberger Steins and the Liebersteins and the, uh, you know that and I you know I, I don't want to detract from that because they were good brands and. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a, a cheap, so-called cheap brand was the, the Tussies, the yeah. so-called Tussies. And, you know, that was drunk by the top uh, people at Stellenbosch Farmers Wine. You know, so you can't just, because some, there's a price to something, uh, disregard it. And so, of course, at Stellenbosch and then, of course, Janni Engelbrecht later and the Hempies de Tway, and they, they were all, we, you were... You were engaged in wine, but I think Bolan could see it. Look, I never thought I'd produce a wine. This is a story of complete chance. And and let me tell you, and let me tell your listeners out there, I'm not a wine producer. I'm not a wine maker. <laughs> this is a hobby that doesn't cost me too much. Um, I think our little vineyard in Ribeca Steel is probably the smallest working vineyard in South Africa. But probably there might be smaller ones, but it's a fifth of a hectare. Um, uh, I, Jenny, my late wife, and I uh, had a, a huge affinity with, for France, the south of France in particular, and then obviously uh, Provence. You know, that was a favourite uh, place of ours. Not that we would go there often, but the times we went there, and this idea of having a little piece of land of your own uh, where you grow something yeah. just you know stuck and a great friend of mine dan bardenost and lynn bardenost university friends they had a little place in ribic west she's the sister town of ribic castile we would visit there and dan incredibly enthusiastic um, wine man and winemaker and he he as i didn't he made his garage his own wine <laughs> And so we got thinking, you know, this place, really, Castile, it's the oldest, one of the oldest towns in South Africa, 1661, I think. Uh, Jan van Riebeck sent a search party out, I think a guy called Peter Kratov was leading it, and he found this valley. Mm -hmm. And immediately, you know, uh, didn't cell phone back, but did what he ever did back <laughs> to Jan van Riebeck and said, this is a good place, and they, you know, the, they, they, that's why they obviously called it uh, Ribic Castile, the, the mountain behind. And uh, another interesting historical factor is, is that um, Jan Smuts and D.F. Milan were both born there. 
in the late 80s, it would have been incredible that two prime ministers uh, that, you know, that you've got to look at the history of this country and, and those two names would be uh, fairly significant. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and to visit the Jan Smuts Museum at outside Rebek West, where this man, who was one of the brightest men in the world, considered to be, became powerful, fought against the English, for the English. There you see where he was born and lived his first years in a small little room with sand floors. I mean, it's just the mind box. But anyway, we're going off the story. <laughs> so we eventually found a small place in Ribic Castile, old, uh, really old a home that was really uh, down, uh, downtrodden. It was, it needed a lot of work. And Jenny, my late wife, she was very clever and brilliant at, at, at decorating and, and creating something that was amazing. And then there was a little earth next to it where we got the, the vineyard going and a few olive trees. And as I said, you know, to be there yourself, I think there's a picture somewhere of me and 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 before that, in fact, there was a. I was I was I used to run in those days, Dan. And I was running up the the, the, the road that comes from Hermon through to Manus up the uh, um, uh, Malmesbury, almost past the uh, uh, Kluvenberg, with the famous the toy family. And I was running, and, and a bucky stopped next to me, and a young guy looked out and he said. Good morning, good morning. What, what mark you is on? I said, yeah, I got the image scheme come And he said, and the oak said to me, this young guy said, his son in the back, he said, it's not going to help you. You have to go to the fuck number three. Now, that guy was a guy called Arno Flock. And the Flocks are another major, major family. They farm that whole area. Yeah. And Arno was a descendant of the Flocks, had his own uh, a table grape business, amazing farmer. And when it came to planting a vineyard, um, Rosa Kruger, who was happened also to be just down the road in those days, a viticulturalist yeah. of, of, of renown, she came and looked and she said, um, Grenache is the only, she looked at the soil. I think there's, there's quite a high uh, uh, volume of clay in the soil. Mm -hmm and um the water slightly our water went to um, um elsenberg for testing slight high sodium so she, she sourced grenache stockies for for us from montpellier <laughs> in france and uh in fact the guy who sold it to us he came to visit one day can you believe from montpellier i think he was more interested in the rugby stories <laughs> anyway we to 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 work with the guys from Arno's farm, you know, they know how to put the sluta in. The drainage was was not great at that stage. Um, get the irrigation on its drip irrigated, uh, trestled. Mm -hmm. uh, we thought of uh, bush wines, but um, Arno said, "I won't last with the bush wine bending all the time." So, <laughs> <laughs> so we trestled it, and yes, you know. Um, Look, I mentioned the Swartland and the, the pride I have in producing just something that, that you know, I can, I can actually drink <laughs> myself, you know. Well, let's, uh, let's have a long overdue sip of it before we continue this wonderful story. Cheers, Monet. And I am... Um... Oh, not bad. It's glorious. I'm going to jump into that taste profile in a second because right. it is it is a lot of fun. Now, I must say you've you've tried really hard since we arrived at the airport together today to play down this wine story. Yeah, you know, small something. You've got the most famous person in old vines on the planet yeah. who's put your roots together. <laughs> yeah. You've imported them from France. From, uh, you've yeah, created yeah. your own vineyard from scratch. This is more than just a hobby, Mr. Yeah, Dubois. No, you've done something quite special here. And and you know the story. You know, the, the sad part of it for me, obviously, is, um, well, there's a sad and happy part to it. The one is Jenny, my late wife, could could see the fruition of this. And, you know, to have a harvest lunch with your family, um, you know, through the olive season, end of um, May, 
or the middle of May, we come pick olives and the kids would arrive there and then the, 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 the harvest of the grapes um, to actually to actually experience that that family um, bonding th through uh, through a, an, a passion that comes from the soil if I could put it that way yeah. I don't know how to put it and you asked me you asked me about the the name that you couldn't pronounce <laughs> so let's hold it up here quickly just so everybody can see there we go um if you're watching this because i may have quite a few people who watch this in the uk uh i'm gonna i'm gonna have a fist of it the three theaters one time three theaters one time my late <laughs> wife jenny had a wonderful feature in front of the house uh with a watering uh, a fountain feature mm -hmm. with three old watering cans that ran and, and dropped water in and my, um, when we started the wine, we were looking for a name. And my daughter-in-law, uh, Annika, and says Afrikaans Macy, she came up with the name. She said that would three hitters fontaine, three watering cans fountain. Now it doesn't go well in, in English, <coughs> and, but in Afrikaans, it's hard and, to miss. I mean, you, you mentioned we mentioned earlier that uh, the rosé that was served at the Queen's Jubilee. Yolanda, yes, woman and wolf. Woman and wolf. Yolanda for sure. Yeah, Yolanda for sure. And it also is a, a, a Swatland um, a wine. And a friend of mine phoned me afterwards and said, "Why wasn't your wine served at the Queen's Jubilee?" And my only answer was that they couldn't pronounce Trichitos Fontaine. <laughs> but anyway, I think uh, she produced an amazing wine to, to actually get that accolade, as a lot of our our wines in this country have got, as we've mentioned before. There are accolades, whether it's uh, that one, one of the many, many others uh, that come not from one person, but from a team. I think we had a photo pop a moment ago. We can go back to that of, of you surrounded by a crew of uh, people who I yeah. suspect. There we go. Look uh, looking ever so slightly yeah. younger, October 2013. That's a yeah. decade ago. Uh, tell me about these these people you yeah, worked I with. Think, I think one the guy's name, they've all, I mean, they're all big men now. The guy, one guy's Dion. On my uh, on my right, and he's now almost a, a manager on the farm. Gershwin, I know. The youngster in the front here was a youngster. I think he got into a bit of trouble somewhere, but uh, yeah, I, 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 they're still around. But uh, you know, they 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 actually take these guys from Arno's farm. They come and they prune for me, and I could never do this without. Um, uh, there they are. That's our little piece of uh, uh, felt, almost as it was in those days. Um, they take great pride, you know. In Harvest Day, it is just for me that that they also feel they were part of this, uh, that they planted this, and and they prune and they come down and um, uh, spray. Uh, unfortunately, we have to spray. Yeah, and uh, it's just that. Uh, it seems uh, that one wouldn't want to always, but we try and, I don't know, is a very scientific, very scientific farmer. And um, obviously, he's a table grape uh, um, and other fruits. They, they, they've just plant, planted citrus at, um, at Lorelei, which is a farm on the Berg River. Citrus, mm -hmm. uh, 20,000 citrus trees. I mean, these are guys with. with <laughs> That's vision cool. <laughs> brave brave guys and uh but anyway he, he, he he's i would call him sort of a partner in my you know during the drought we i mean water is a big big issue there we have our own boil i mentioned to you they suggested that the sodium content where we stay is a bit high good boil, nice water comes through yeah but we they suggested that we mix it at least 50 50 with fresh water mm -hmm. Fresh water, either from uh, from municipality, which was possible in those days, or from dams and rivers. And he used to ship water with a trailer with tanker, and we'd pump it over into our tanks and to to, to mix the water. So you know, more than a farmer. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to have yeah. a quick look. I think we've got a. We also have an image of the map of exactly where you sit. This is the CBD 
of uh, of Ubi Castillo. I think uh, no, not, maybe that one didn't come through. Uh, but you you literally, I can actually hold it up for everyone yeah. to uh, to see here. So. Uh, so there we go. Uh, you're basically you're in the centre of town. That's that's two highways. Well, it's on the corner of, of town. It, it's it's Cliff Street. Those are the no really Castillo. Cliff Street runs down from the mountain, and there's Hermonweg that runs from Hermon. Hermon. And as you come into the to the there's a corner, and that's that's the the house on the corner, and that's the little vineyard. The vineyard, the vineyard there. <laughs> And as you can see there, it's uh, this was registered at uh, Savas or wherever uh, they do it, and it's data gereya, seven hundred and fifty stock. So that's a massive farm, and as I say, it's just uh, it's it's really for for family and friends, and um, you are obviously. Uh, working your way up onto that list. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you say that in jest, but uh, I look at some of the WhatsApp from someone in the wine community when word gets out that the latest Mornay Duplessis release has arrived, people like Daryl Balfour go absolutely mad trying to get their hands on it. Yeah. Uh, you've created a little cult wine partly because of uh, the fact that it's you making it and the, the volumes that you're making. But it's also really nice wine, and you, you clearly got told right. This is the right grape to make. Uh, these are the conditions in which to apply yeah. yourself and, and, and get it right. How much the love of the south of France aside, does this style of wine fit into what you and Jenny might normally have been drinking? Yeah, absolutely. We would we we would fall in love with a lunch on a little stream in the south of France with a bottle of Cote de Provence. <laughs> And I, uh, you know, circumstance and wine that you know as well as I do that a wine, a wine is is much of the circumstance and the company of the food, uh, and that just implies. So we were big, we were rose drinkers, but the, the the fact of the matter is, we did make a Grenache Noir in 2019, which was brilliant. But the, such a small um, harvest to split the harvest to make a red and to make a rosé. So we decided to to, uh, to to keep it in rosé. As you see, there's only 1,600 bottles, and proud to say that produced for Mornay and Jenny, you can see. And the early producers were the Ribic Winery. Mm -hmm. And don't throw away the wineries of that in terms of producing great wines, mm. the Swatland Winery, the Ribic Winery. Yeah. Um, Ribic Winery treated me unbelievably well. I mean, they, they didn't even do a little, one little thousand liter tank. It's just a waste of time for them. But they, they did it religiously every year yeah. and got to know the people there, the, um, the winemaker, lady winemaker there in, the, in, in uh, uh, Cherie Notnach, a fantastic winemaker. She made the, the rosé for, for a number of years. And then Alicia Bosov, who was the original winemaker at Rivik Winery, who now is the winemaker at Pekingese Kloof Wines. She's done this year's um, um, right in And I think fall into place, Pekingese Kloof is the, considered the home of Grenache yeah. as well. So, I mean, it just, how, how did we get to Grenache? And I didn't say to Rosa, we want to make rosé. Uh, uh, apologies for uh, mid-interruption. Thank you. Uh, so you settled on uh, so you've settled on this, and yeah. it's uh, a style that's also, I suppose, quite different to maybe some of the rosé that you might have drunk earlier on in your wine drinking career. Because a rosé, as a, a whole approach, a whole philosophy in South Africa, has undergone a fairly seismic shift. I think in the world. I mean, rosés were always considered just. A, nice quaffable, um, you know, lunchtime drinking wine, but you look all over the world, Rosé has taken a new, a new, uh, it's new, it's legitimate place in the wine hierarchy, if I can put it that way. And certainly in South Africa, you, you, we, we did make deep Rosés. Um, Shudderingly so. <laughs> deep red Rosés. Um, these this as we wanted to style it on the, 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 the Provence rosés, which I, I, I would think make the, probably 
uh, can be called the home of rosé. Um, and light colored, the right light color, also not too pale. Um, and and I, I'm not a wine maker. I mean, I'm, I'm absolutely just a bystander. And to perfect the, the, the color in itself is is it's quite uh, an art form. Is an art form. You know how many, how long on the skins. Um, you know, process sometimes, even through the fermentation and the filtering even the filtering can change you know i've seen the wine in the tank and they say oh, it's got filter for a year and then it gets slightly brighter or so you know so it's, yeah. a, it's a fine art form and the, look the taste i'm led to believe and my complete um um acknowledgement and and um, uh, i'm in awe of wine makers and the science behind winemaking but the, even they say at the end of the day it's it's what the soil gives you and it's what the sun gives you and what the climate gives you <laughs> and that is a big part of it but they yeah. do tend to play things they down, play and, uh, down yeah. they're generally a very yeah. humble lot uh they've given us in this case through your grapes uh a wine that's not quite that palest of onion skins it's somewhere heading up to almost kind of a, a light bronze salmonish color uh, and it's it's wine that uh, as you drink it, you're getting that slightly unripe strawberry. You're getting a wonderful savory fruit. Mm. Uh, there's a lightness to touch without losing the substance to the wine. It's just a wine that sits in really nice balance. And uh, and all more so as you look over the Crocodile River and yeah, Sunset. No, it is a wine to be to be enjoyed in this in mm. this environment. And yes, I think you've you've summed it up. But you know, quite often um, somebody will plant a tasting thought i call it in your mind <laughs> and it's incredible how sometimes that comes out yeah um, and 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 the winemaker alicia uh this year has just mentioned slight hint of candy cloth and yeah and <laughs> you know interesting when i would never have thought uh that but uh <laughs> no no, I definitely get it. It's a little whisper. It's a little whisper. It it's matches whisper. matches the colour as well. Speaking of the colour, of the style, of the nature, could Mornay Duplessis, infamous flattener of Nasbuerta and uh, established hard man of South African rugby, have got away with drinking rosé yeah. after a big province versus Northern Transvaal game yeah. all those years yeah, ago? I couldn't uh, think of sitting with... Um, Louis Moulman and Mona von Heerden in, in the change room and saying to somebody, <laughs> won't you bring us a bottle of rosé? <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. And, and look, I mean, I love a, a red and I love Shannon's as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably my, my favorite white wine, um, Chardonnay's. In the early days, we climbed into the Chardonnay's and Jan Bullen could see, actually told me one day, the only reason you like Chardonnays, because the early days Chardonnays were quite high in alcohol content. And <laughs> Bonus is on that the alcohol is <laughs> with us. And and yeah, by the way, we we traditionally try and get this to to land up at about twelve point five. But again, the nature will will tell you where it is. This year it's thirteen percent, but still uh, light. Um, I, I hope you find it as not a heavy. No, it's, yeah. it's, it's certainly not. And uh, the, the intimacy with which you know this wine is based not just on uh, the amount of quality control, I have no doubt you do yourself, but yes. also the part of the process that you play. Just how hands-on, I know you're not a winemaker, but how much time are you spending in the cellar? Are you spending with the winemakers? Yeah, no, I, I, I leave it to them. I really leave it to them. I'm glad to be invited at critical moments. But I don't interfere. I know nothing. I don't know enough about it. I get um, intimidated by what I don't know. Uh, all I know is it's been an incredible lifelong privilege and uh, ambition to grow something that you can put in a bottle and enjoy. And we, we did that with our, our olive trees. We had olive trees there too. And I say we did that. Unfortunately, circumstances are such that uh, we no I no longer have the house, but I've kept the interest in the vineyard. 
which leads to <clears throat> where you're heading forward. It's a, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you're clearly enjoying this. Uh, it's a, a wonderful family project, uh, uh, the chance to have a glass, and I'm sure with every glass evoke wonderful memories of Jenny, but also share this with the rest of the family. Uh, is it kind of where it needs to be, or is there perhaps a, a, another chapter of this wine story still to come? Yeah, it, who knows? Uh, my my partner, if I can call it, Arno uh, Flock, uh, he's a he's a thinker and ambitious for and he's you know he's thinking why can't we plant some vines on on the ground that I have and he's a he's a reasonably sound farmer and I'm thinking that just means a bigger loss that that we're going to make but he's a good farmer and who knows we might uh, with Alicia the um, the winemaker Alicia Bosser we might. Um, uh, I, I won't have this vineyard in perpetuity. My agreement with um, is for the next three years. So we will have to make new plans and it'll, I'll see where it takes us. Um, it's been uh, an incredible, incredibly fulfilling chapter in, in my life and Jenny's life. Um, we did it. We set out to do it. Our friends, uh, the Bardenos I mentioned in mm -hmm. earlier on, they were instrumental in in igniting the flame and uh, they've also moved on from from their f farming so yeah you i'm put it this way i don't have a big farm to to worry about um, going on it's a it's a fifth of a hectare of land <laughs> and that and that kind of leads you to where life is now out in hermanus yeah. uh captain of the junior bowls team <laughs> playing golf 11 times a week and uh sampling some fantastic swatland rosa absolutely absolutely and never don't forget where i where i live in the hermanus in the himmel and Arda valley and uh, i've just read uh, uh, lately the financial times janice janice robinson Mm -hmm. um, had been in the valley, an incredible uh, success story. The the Himmel and Arda Valley, the Newton Johnsons, and the uh, creations, and yeah. so on and so forth. So, I am privileged to to be able to to sample those wines as well. Before we let you go, as the sun uh, says a final goodbye to this evening on this beautiful, beautiful spot in which we are broadcasting the show. Uh, I'll go back to the, the reference we shared earlier on and the success that both wine and sport uh, consistently give South Africans reason to smile about. Uh, you touched very quickly on the spring box. I think coming together was the term that you used uh, as the manager of a World Cup winning side who knows what is needed. Uh, what does Mornay Duplessis think of the chances of a repeat of the 2019 draft? You know, then. Um... I, at the airport today, it was amazing how many people are, are, are what's the word, um, engrossed, in, committed, um, involved. Uh, there's another word I'm trying to find uh, uh, in the Springboks. They, they, they want to know and they want us to do well and so on and so forth. So uh, I look at these this last game and the previous game, I, I almost think you know, Kitch took the team around the country. We played Western Province just before the World Cup started. We played Natal. They were atrocious games. Joel Stransky kicked a drop kick, ironically, against Western Province to win that game for us. I mean, it was a warm up game. And um, against Natal, it was also a dismal display. And, it, you know, players are not sure are they in the team yet, are they not? Yeah. Are they, is this a trial? Am I being looked at? Am I this? Should I play for myself? So I, I really wouldn't go to uh, take too much um, out of this. What's got to happen quickly is they will. I hope that the team that plays the All Blacks at Twickenham is the team that's going to play most of our games. That's, that's what I think. Then, then you'll see, I, I guarantee you'll see a, a difference. And I don't know, Rossi is such a deep thinker, maybe. He just wants to work us into this cat and the dog situation. <laughs> he does love that, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. So I've no fear that we've got the the the, the talent. Um, 
it will be getting the right combinations. And that's, you know, sometimes injury plays, plays a role. And also how good the other teams are. You know, you never can tell. Yeah. Well, it's also a bit like getting that perfect wine right. Uh, wine right. You need the, the terroir and the winemaker and the grapes and yeah. the weather. All to come together. All comes together. Yeah. Which it has in this particular wine. Uh, I see uh, Brett Levine uh, watching. Uh, good chat, Dan. Thanks, Brett. It's been a pleasure having Mornay with us. Uh, Manuel Cabecho from uh, his corner of Cape Town, the big man down at Element House, uh, my favorite Chilean legend. Uh, I, ah, I, I, say hello to you. <laughs> I fear he's speaking about you and not me. Uh, gracias, Senor Manuel. And uh, Ronaldo Silvestre de Souza, Mornay is the goat. Such an amazing guy. And just in case your cutting edge terminology isn't up to scratch, that's, okay. of course, greatest of all time yeah. and uh, not referencing you to a domestic animal. <laughs> there we go. Uh, the last of our interruptions, we've had a few of them. There are a couple of hippo. There's a pod just below us. You might have heard them during the course of the show. Uh, and they're uh, wishing you good night, as indeed is the Kruger, as indeed are Mornay and I. We've got some golf to play tomorrow. Great. I look, look forward, forward to that. Forward to uh, I you. also... I also believe, so keep an eye out for this, there might just be a, a couple of cases of this wine sitting in Norman Goodfellows in the next little while. I might, I might have to <coughs> take it away from one of our family members, but <laughs> let's try. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mornay, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure sharing some wine stories with you, Thanks, doing something Danny. a little different, and uh, look forward to many more glasses together. Thank you. So there we go. Mornay Cheers. Duplessis, uh, one of South Africa's rugby greats, but also someone who clearly doesn't just love his wine, but... Uh, that's what he's doing when it comes to giving it to us as well. That wraps us up for the show for this evening. Dan really likes wine brought to you by Norman Goodfellows. New month kicking off. Brand new wines in the Norman Goodfellows. Dan really likes wine store. Look out for those from tomorrow, including some slightly older Cabernet Franc from Gabriel's Club, some very nice Merlot, and a little bit of Olden Merlot from the guys at Oldenburg, plus something very special from Mullen. We're off to go and hit 300 balls each and then get into bed by 8 o'clock, head to the golf tomorrow. Have a lovely evening. Thanks for joining the show. We'll see you live on Thursday as we kick off August with some very special women in wine. Until then, goodbye. Cheers.